What's up everyone, back for another beer review. And today I'll be reviewing a beer from the Abita Brewing Company. And they are out of Abita Springs, Louisiana. And this is their Christmas Ale, the 2022 release. So this is an American Brown Ale that comes in at 5.8% alcohol by volume, 40 IBUs at the time of review. This bottle is just over three and a half months old. So full disclosure, I have had this beer before, but it's been eight years. Last time I had this one was back in 2014, and I don't remember much about it, but I did check it in on tap and say a few things about it. I said I was expecting more of a Hopford American Brown Ale, but it surprised me because it was way more balanced, and the malt actually uh, came to the forefront a little bit more than the hop character. Now, I looked on their website for this year's release because on the back of the bottle, they have a little spiel here. It says, each year at the Abita Brewery, we craft a special dark ale for the holiday season. Then Papa Noel harnesses up his team of gators and makes this special delivery. The recipe changes each year so that Abita Christmas ale is always the perfect gift. So I think that's cool that they change the recipe just like Anchor's. But uh, I think, again, it, I think this is American Brown Ale uh, based on what I read on their website. They're brewing this one with, uh, let me think if I remember off the top of my head, Columbus, Cascade, Centennial, those are the three C's, and then they use Amarillo. And that is all I know about it. They have like the most of the um, ingredients on their website. But uh, yeah, so again, eight years since I last had this one. And I think I gave it like a three, five on a tap. So we'll see how this one is. Let's give it a pour. Yeah, so it's kind of looking like a brown ale. For sure. Try to get a decent head here. Beautiful. All right, so put this one over here. I, I need to review some uh, Abita stuff. You know, they're bas basically shelfies at this point. I really used to enjoy their Turbo Dog. Uh, their Purple Haze for a raspberry uh, wheat beer was pretty good. So I'll have to get into those at some point. Now, as far as this one looks, um, yeah, it's not crystal clear. There is a decent bit of like haze in there, some fine particulates, uh, but it has a decent clarity to it. Uh, it's going to look darker on camera, probably like a dark brown. Um, and, and it has more of like a toffee kind of look to it, maybe a little bit darker than that. Just over a finger of a straight up khaki colored head. Very creamy looking. Yeah, it looks like a nice, again, I think it says American Brown Ale. It just says Ale on the uh, bottle, so whatever. And yeah, it's a little bit more. It's like walking through a forest. Nice piney kind of resinous tone to the nose, like it's definitely there. Yeah, it's like a, it's like almost like spruce tip esque. But then underneath that, there's a lot of like caramelized sugars. There's toffee. There's caramel. There's brown sugar. A little bit of like an apple, almost like a caramel covered apple kind of feeling to it. A touch of like a nuttiness. Yeah, this smells like an American brown ale. I mean. And I'll be honest with you, when it comes to American Brown Ale style, uh, the American Brown Ale style is not one of my favorite styles. Um, I've had beers within that style that I really enjoy, but like, it's just not one of my favorite styles. I prefer English Brown Ales. I like a little bit more of a malt forward kind of uh, kick to the beer than a hop forward when it comes to Brown Ales. But this doesn't smell bad at all. I mean, like again, a little spruce tippy with all that malty goodness. Maybe a touch of like an herbaceousness as well. Yeah, smells pretty good. Let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. Maybe this is what I meant in 2014. Again, that nose to me is screaming more hop forward. And again, spruce tip, pine, earthy, slightly herbaceous. But in the taste, it's not, it's not really all that hop forward. Like it's, it has a big multi presence with a little bit of hop character. Body in this at 5.8, right around medium body, pretty nice. Again, they don't even have the ABV on the bottle. If I'm just maybe not seeing it. But no, on the website, it said 5.8 and 40 IBUs. Um, but yeah, medium body, 5.8%, pretty nice. The uh, mouthfeel has a nice moderate carbonation, really smooth though on the palate. Body's nice, mouthfeel's nice. Taste, again, I, I was thrown for a loop because of the aroma. Uh, very akin to eight years ago when I had it. I was expecting more of a, a kind of punch to the face with some hops. Not really getting it as much. A lot of malt character at the forefront. There's this nice like brown bread type of feeling to it. There's caramel. There's toffee. A little bit of brown sugar. There's a nut, like a nondescript kind of 
nuttiness. A little bit of that, more of like a dried apple as well. That all hits me at the front of the palate. As it passes through, though, I get a touch of like the piney spruce tip kind of feeling to it. Um, almost mint-esque, but very slight. It's not overpowering. There's more of like a an earthy herbaceousness to this one, though. Maybe not herbaceous, more maybe like a floral kind of hop tone. Each sip I take, I think it's balancing out because when I took that first sip, it was more malt for. Now, as I keep on drinking that, they're kind of balancing out. The hops are kind of balancing with the malts and making it um, very easy to drink, as you can see. 5.8%, can't really tell. High the alcohol. Well, you could get in trouble with this one. You know, you sat there and drank a, a six pack over the course of an evening. You'd be feeling good. And I think it would sneak up on you because this, this is really, really easy to drink. Um, extremely easy in comparison to a lot of other Christmas sales because this isn't a winter warmer. It doesn't have a bunch of spices. So, you know, you're not bombarded and with like cinnamon on the palate or like nutmeg or something. Yeah, it's very, here's the thing. There's a complexity to the beer, as I am describing, but at the same time, it's somewhat simplistic, too, in its delivery. So uh, this is a little bit better than I remember it, but again, I think I have a very, I'm having a very similar experience to when I first had this one back in 2014. I think that was the first time, the first and only bottle I have. I don't remember having it outside of that, but again, my memory is shit at this point, so who knows. But um, yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this one. Is it my favorite? No, I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you and say it is. But I will say that this is pretty solid, and I have no problems giving Abita's Christmas Ale the 2022 release. I'm gonna give it a, um, I'm gonna give this a high 3.5. I'm gonna go 3.6. I think that's where this lands. I think to get into 3.75, I don't, I don't know. I maybe, I don't know. I'm just feeling a 3.6. And I say this in a lot of my reviews, but that's where like ratings you take it with a grain of salt like i love watching beer tubers i mean i've been watching beer tube for you know 13 years now and uh i like using it as a resource and i love hearing what people other people you know think about beers i drink or that i want to try but until you drink the beer yourself you really don't know what you're getting into so i'm giving this a 3.6 there might be a people out there that give this a five out of five there might be other people that think this is absolute dog shit and it's a drain pour we all have different opinions we all have different likes and dislikes to me i don't know what this would need to get higher, but just let it be known that I have no issues with this beer. I'm going to drink the rest of it off camera and I'm going to be fine with it. But would this be something I pick up regularly? Probably not, if I'm being honest. But anyway, price point availability, uh, wherever you see a beta, you probably should see this. I don't know a beta's a distribution footprint. We have gotten them here in the Buffalo, New York area for as long as I can remember, at least 10 years, probably you know, even longer than that. So we usually see their seasonals and everything. Although some of their stuff is drying up here. Like it's not easy to find like Turbo Dog, uh, all that. <laughs> I mean, obviously you can get stuff like Purple Haze and like Christmas Ale and when they come out with their different seasonals. But like some of their regular offerings, they're not that fresh because they sit around. But um, uh, price point, I think this was like $9.99 six pack in my area. So that's that's pretty fucking cheap. So yeah, anyway, if you've had this one before, post in the comment section and let me know what you uh, thought about it. They changed the recipe each year. So the fact that I'm having a very similar experience based on my untapped check-in from eight years ago, they probably just tweak it a little bit each year. There's probably not drastic changes, but I like this one. So if you've had this year's vintage or prior vintages, what was your favorite? Let, let me ask you, let me ask you this if you watch to the end. If you've had this beer almost every single year, let's say over the last 10 years, what's your favorite vintage? I'd love to know because um, I can't see it being such a drastic shift from year to year, but maybe one year was just amazing or one year was trash. I'd love to hear it. So anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. To the next one. Cheers.